Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn how to restore an Oracle database in Windows. This is a different scenario where we will be restoring the database on a different server. This is also called cloning, where you want to clone your production database to a test server or you want to have same database hosted on different servers. We will be using, so here what is happened is like the source database server and the target database servers is exactly matching the file structures, etc. So if the source database server is on Windows, uh, if it has got a D drive, E drive, the target server also has got D drive, E drive. Now what we, what we need to do is on the source server, we need to create a P file. We will be transferring this P file to the target. So we'll be creating a P file. We will be taking the, we'll be taking the backup of database using backup database plus archive log command. Now there are other ways to take the backup such as level zero, level one. You can take any type of backup that you are comfortable with. I'll be taking the backup of the database using this particular command. Once you have the backup, you will be transferring these files to the second server or the target server. The P file that we just created, the password file, the database full backup, database control file backup, and the database archive logs. Once we have tra transferred this, we will be creating some of the directories such as audit file dash, the database location files such as for the data file, for the control file, for the read logs, the FRA. If we have configured FRA, we will create the FRA location. Once we have all of these directories, we will be creating a new Oracle service called using the oradim command. So this is the command oradim minus new name of the SID that you want to create startup mode the location of your P file using the P file parameter. So we'll be creating an Oracle service on the target host. And then we will be restoring the database. To restore the database, first we will start the database in no mod mode. We will restore the control file. We will reach, then we will start the database in mod mode, restore the database, recover the database, and open the database using reset logs mode. To see the steps in detail, first you will start the database in, uh, in no mod mode. Then you will connect to Armen. You will restore the control file. Then you will alter the database in mod mode. You will restore the database. You will recover the database. And finally, you will open the database in reset logs mode. At this moment, if everything goes fine, your database will be present on your target server. At this moment, if everything goes fine, your database will be present on your target server and the cloning is complete. Let's see the steps in detail. So I have got, <coughs> sorry, I got this database on the source server. So I'm going to connect to this particular database using command prompt. So let's launch the command prompt as you normally do. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear this. And first thing that we need to do, as I mentioned, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create the P file from SP file. So to do that, we will go to this particular location, your Oracle base location. So wherever your Oracle, sorry, Oracle home location and under that Oracle home location, you can see, and I'll delete this init file it was already created so i'm going to delete this and under this location and i'll empty that from recycle bin as well so now what i'm going to do is first we need to set some we need to set the oracle home sid etc etc to connect to the oracle database we'll set the oracle sid the database that we want to connect oracle home and oracle base i've set all of these environmental variables and now <coughs> sorry again now what we'll do is like we will say We'll connect to the database using SQL plus as sysdba and we will and keep an eye on your background screen keep an eye on your background screen what will happen in the background is like automatically when i run this particular command p file from sp file a init file will get created p file will get created and you can see an init file got created just now so this is the one of the file that we are going to copy we now we also need to take the backup of our database so what I have done is I have already, you can connect to Armen target. So we are going to connect to the database using Armen target. And the command that I'm going to run, as I mentioned, I'm going to run backup database plus archive log. Now you can use any command. You can use any command. But before running this particular command, I want to show you something. So if you go to show all, and here you can see my backup will automatically go to this location. So if I go to this location, I'll take a copy of this location. And if I go to that location, you can see that that particular directory is completely empty. And, and here I also mentioned the con configure control file auto backup on. 
This is very important. And how to configure the RMAN parameters? I, I would like you to Google that around. But basically what we, what I've done, and you, if I wanted to show you, if I wanted to just set up this particular parameter, you can run this particular command and it will set this. Now it is already on, so it will not change it. But if you want me to change it, I've turned it off. Now if I do show all, you can see control file auto backup. It, it was previously control file auto backup was on. Now I've turned it off. So yeah, I, I don't want it off. I want it on. So let's turn it on. And now, so we what what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to run the command backup database plus archive log. So backup database plus archive log. So this is the command that I'm going to run. And before doing that, before running, taking the backup, let's connect to the source database using the SQL de developer. So I'm going to connect to the source. I'm going to remove all of this connections okay so i'm going to connect to the source database and this is the source database and you can see let's see if there is a and you can see there is a table called this uh employees i'm going to drop this particular table because i want to start all again so let me drop this table now if i try to select from you can see i don't have anything or if i it, and I, I just wanted to show you that this particular database is hosted on that Windows system, Windows X16 hostname. Name of the database is Aura 19D, and this is the Windows NT. And here, let me let me actually exit from here, clear the screen, and select star from employee. And we should be able to see that employee table is not present now because we have just dropped it. What I'll do is like I'll create that particular table. And I will insert the first employee in our organization, a rock, and I'll commit the transaction. And I will select from that employee table. And you can see at 7:38, our first employee had joined. And now, if I run the same command here, you can see rock at 7:38 has joined. So this is the database. Now that we have one employee table, what we are going to do now is we are going to take the backup now. I just wanted to show you that we, it is the same database that we are restoring. So now we can we can take the backup 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 database plus archive log and see in the background. Keep an eye on the background. So it will it is going to take the backup. It's right now taking the backup of the first. It took the archive log backup. Then it will take the data files, all of the data files, full backup. It's going to take the full backup and then it will take the control file auto backup. So that's what is happening right now on the screen. Give it a minute. And that looks have to be completed. For safety, you can always take another archive log backup. So you can take the archive log backup of your database. So for safety, we have taken one more archive log backup. Now that we have the backup, what we are going to do is we are just going to see where is, we are going to see where is our data file. So the data file is under D drive or our data or an ID. Keep a note of this location. So this is the location where our source database is hosted. Keep, let's see where is our control file. Let's see where is our log file. And you can see that everything is under the or our data or an ID. Control file is also under the D drive or our data or an ID. Now that we have taken the backup of the database, it's time to copy the backup on a shared location and transfer the backup to the direct uh, to the target so i'm going to copy the entire backup so i don't need i'm going to delete this <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm copying the backup then what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the init file and the password file remember in the as i mentioned that these are the files that you will transfer the p file password file full backup control file and archive log so i've copied all of this now it is time to log off from the source server. Our work on the source server is done. You can log it off. So I'm going to disconnect from the source server and I'm going to log into the target server. And on this particular server, now we, if I, if I set this particular Oracle software is already installed. So we are not going to install. We are, this is not a tutorial to install the database software. So I'm going to clear this. And if I run this, if I run this particular command, and if I say SQL, so I've set the environmental variables. And if I run this, you will be able to see TNS protocol error, which means we don't have this particular database here. We do not have this particular database here. 
So first thing that we will do is like we will be copying, we will be copying those backup files to copy the, we will copy them in the exactly same location as it was on the, on the source server. Let me, this is the location where it was on the original server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the location where I copied all of these files. Where is my password file? Looks like I have not copy the password file. I, I have to log in back again on the source server. I thought I copied everything, but looks like I did not copy the password file for whatever reason. Not I copied the file. Oh, I copied the password file in the original location, the backup location, but not the shared location. I'm going to disconnect from this session once again. Yeah. And now here, now I got everything. So I'm going to copy this to my backups location. So this is the empty. I'm going to copy this. This is the target server where I'm copying this. Now, once I've copied all of this file, I'm going to place the init file and the password file in the Oracle in the Oracle home database location. So in this particular Oracle home, wherever is your Oracle home, under that Oracle home, there will be a database folder. And currently you can see there are only two files. I'm going to copy the password file and I'm going to copy the SP init file. Now that I've copy this open the init file and look at the look at the location of where is your audit file dashed where is your control files where is your oracle where is your uh, fra create all of these directories so you can see fra is under this location d drive order data order 19d control file is under the d drive order data order 19d your audit file dashed is under uh, admin oracle base admin order 19d so create all of these directories so i've already return commands for that. So you can see here, I've already written the command. So I'm going to run these commands once again. We have already created the backup directory. So we are, I'm going to run these commands one by one. So I, you can see there was a slight disturbance. Sorry for that. So now you can see here that um, if we have already created uh, the, we have already created the backup. So we have to create the other directories. So this is the directory for your database. This is the directory for your FRA. This is the directory for your ADAM and this already created. So now it failed, but all of these directories are created. So that's good. Now it's now we have already copied the, we have already copied the SP file and the P file. Now what we are going to do is first thing is, first thing is we need to create an Aura Deem service. We need to create an Aura Deem service. And in when we create the Aura Deem service, we need to specify the location. We need to specify the location of your P file. So I'm going to take this location. This is the location where we have set our P file. So I'm going to take this location and I'm going to keep the name of that. And I need to see if there is an extension for that. Yes, there is an extension. So copy the entire name, put it under this. And you run the command prompt in admin window. You need to be administrator because it's going to create a service. So run the command in admin window. And then you will say, you will run this aura dim minus new. So you are going to run this particular command and you can see instance created. You can safely exit from this. That's done. The work is done. And now what we are going to do is we are now going to launch another command window and let's clear this let's clear this and first set the environmental variables what are the three environmental variables we need to set the oracle sid oracle home and oracle base so let's set all of that and the first thing that we need to do as you if we have seen that these directories are created the service is created we have to start the database in no mount mode then we have to restore the control file then we have to start the database in mount mode restore the database recover the database and before I do that, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to create uh, another record in our source database called water. So now we have a second employee who has joined our organization called water. So let's run this two commands together and let's select from that. And we, you can see now in, in our source database, we have two data records called rock and water. So two employees have joined our organization. Now, what we will do is like we will, we will go to the target server and we are going to first thing is we have to start the database in no mount mode so sql plus ssdba and startup no mount now this is the first time the database is starting so this 
when we run this particular command, it's going to take some time because it's going to create all of the directories for it. Now, Oracle normally takes the startup normally takes a few seconds or you know a few minutes, but not minutes, but few seconds it takes because it has to allocate all of the buffers, etc., etc. But this is the first time it is happening, so it will definitely take some time. As you can see in the background, the startup is completed. So the first step is completed. Now what I'll do is like I will open one more command prompt. Let me clear all of this. And set the same three environmental variables. That's done. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to, and I'll show it to you. So we need to let me take this in a different notepad so that we have a clear view of what we are going to do. So we have to start up the database in no more mode, which I've already done. You can see here, start up the database in no more mode. Then we are going to restore the control file. Then we are going to using the RMAN. Then we are going to open the database in mount mode. Then we have to restore the database. We have to recover the database and we have to open the database in reset logs. So let's go to the RMAN and clear the screen and run our main target and what we have to do now is we have to restore the control file but we have to when we restore the control file we need to tell oracle where is our control file so let's go to the, the location where we have copied all of our backup look files and give the name of the control file so this is the control file name i'm going to take the name of this control file put a slash put a name of the control file and i'm going to take the name of that and i'm going to run that command in our main and now before running that particular command, I want to show you something. So if I go to the location where our database files are, so you can see here, all our data, all our 19D, under this is completely empty. What will happen? What will happen when I run this particular command? Keep an eye on this particular directory. Keep an eye on this particular directory in the background. I'm going to minimize all of this. So keep an eye on your, this directory. When I run this particular command, two control files will automatically get created in this particular directory. So give it a minute. In the background, you can see control 01 and control 02 appeared. So automatically this particular files. And if you ask me why it restored in this particular location, it is all in the SP file, in your init file. In the init file, if you see the control file parameter is set to this particular location. So when the Oracle database restores it, it will read the P file and it will it will see that control files has to be created with these two names. So it created with the exactly same name under this location. So now that Control files are restored. The next step is to alter the database in mount mode and then restore that. Now you can run the mount this particular command from SQL plus. So you can run it from SQL plus or you can run it from the you can run it from the RMAN. So I'll, I'll run it from the RMAN. So take this command and run it in the RMAN. Give it a minute for the database to go in the mount mode. And now exit and clear the screen. Back to the RMAN, and now we have only two steps in this one. So what we are going to do is keep an eye again on this particular screen. And what we are going to do now is we are going to run the next command, which is restore database. And then we are going to run the recover database. So let's run the restore database. And when I run this particular command, you should be able to see that in the background under in this particular folder, automatically the sysox system data file all of those files will appear here. So let's run this particular command and you, you keep an eye here and you can see all of this particular file appeared. So right now the database is getting restored in the location which matches to the source database. Once the restore is done, the final command is recover database. And once the database is recovered, we will we'll go to the SQL plus and we will launch, run the alter database open reset log. So let's wait for the restore command to complete. Give it a minute and that completed. So now we will do the recover database, which is the final command. It will say that it is missing an archive log, which is okay. Our work with RMAN is done. Let's go to the SQL prompt and let's exit from it. Let's clear the screen. Let's connect as SQL plus. Let's say alter database, open reset logs. And now after that, run another command. Let's wait for it to complete. Run another command. Select name comma open mode. So wait for select name comma open mode from v dollar database. And this time the database 
we have successfully restored. So our work is done, but we are going to just verify something. So we have successfully restored the database. So that looks good. Now, if I run a query, select star from employee, we should see only one record here, not two records. The second water will not appear. So you can see one rock because the second record that we inserted in our source database was after the backup. So this is now the second database. So it will not have whatever changes that you do on the source will not come on the second database. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to disconnect from this and I'm going to set this particular parameter. So you can see I've already set it. Let's test it. Let's connect to the database. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this query. Two queries. <coughs> Sorry. So if I go to the source server, it is hosted on Win 16. If I go to the target database, it is hosted on Win 19. So this is, it is on a different server. You can see we have successfully restored. On the source server, we have, if you look at the employee record, I have got two employees. But if I go to the target, I have only one employee, which is rock. And the reason, as I mentioned before, that when we restore this particular backup, that backup did not have this record. So now if I create another, let's say another employee joins our, our source server, let's say air has joined, then that particular employee will never make it to the it will never make it to the because there is no kind of replication or anything so it will never come because it's a backup so this is a completely different database so, and this particular database was hosted on win 19 and this particular database the source database is on win 16. so with this we have successfully learned how to how to restore the database oracle database in windows on a different server this is a db cloning and everything matched the same file structure and the steps were very simple we created the p file we took the backup, we transferred the P file, password file, full backup, control file backup, and database archive logs. We created some directories on the target. We created an Oracle service. We restored the database. We opened the database in reset logs, and we verified that all looks good. Thank you for watching. And if you like this particular tutorial, if you like my channel, do subscribe. And thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye-bye.